Now we're going to move on to our next story, which is actually currently being made into a movie, but you guys are going to get a little spoiler on that. You guys don't have to wait for the movie to come out. Back during World War II, Joseph Goebbels, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. If, I, if I'm wrong, I apologize. Not to him, to you. He, I don't care about him. Goebbels? It might be Goebbels. I don't know. Anyway, anyways, Joseph, you got, he was propaganda minister for the Nazis. So he believed that film was one of the greatest propaganda tools around, available. And it was. It was. It is still, too, today. So he made a movie. One of the movies he made was called Sus the Jew. And it was a drama about an innocent German girl being raped by a Jewish man. And audiences around Germany loved it. And he's like, okay, I'm on to something. I just need to make propaganda films to keep the Germans. Because this was like in 1942, 1943. So things weren't going well. He's like, I'm going to make these uh, Nazi propaganda movies, keep the spirits up. This is how we're going to keep people fighting, keep people in line with the Nazi idea. So it dawns on him, what is one of the greatest tragedies in recent human memory, other than the whole Nazi Holocaust thing? It was the sinking of the Titanic. And so Goebbels, I'm going to mispronounce his name every single time I say it, so let's just go on there, but... He decides to make a type movie about the Titanic with a twist. He wants to put the onus on capitalism. The reason why the ship sank was capitalism. The Nazis were national socialists. They were a socialist movement who believed that the government should control. Everyone gets a job. The government controls the economy. Capitalism is not something that they were too fond of. So they basically wrote this script where it's these businessmen in New York, in Britain, who realize that the um, company that owns the Titanic, which I think was the Red Star Line, was not doing well. So they go, what if we take, we take this new boat we built, the Titanic, and we race it across the ocean as fast as we can, and it'll win this award. And what we'll do right now is we're going to short sell our stock because the stock is low. And then once it completes the race, we will buy the stock back or something like that. Or they were going to cover it or whatever. They were going to make a ton of money once it won won the race. So basically, Goebbels is figuring this to be like, it's a mad, 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 mad world, but with the Titanic. It's just this wacky race. So that's the plot. So that's the start of the plot. And then they inserted, they created a German character who's like an officer on the ship. And he's like, as the captain's who's like speeding across the ocean, the German guy's like, we shouldn't go so fast, sir. And the British captain's like, you don't understand anything, German. We're, we, we're going to make it. And this is going to be the fastest boat ride ever. And so then, of course, spoiler alert, the boat ends up hitting an iceberg. So his girlfriend was this, the, the German first officer had a love interest and he's like, he has to get to her to get off the boat. And they show all like the rich people on the boat, like totally cowardly. They're just like, no, no, save me first, save me first. While this German guy's like running through the boat, saving poor people. And all the Germans are like, come with us. We're all on this together and we'll take care of you. And at one point, the German officer, the star grabs this little girl because the boat's starting to like go under. And there's like this this little girl is trapped in her cabin because her parents are like, capitalism rules. See you later, kid. The German guy gets the kid. He then jumps off of the boat and lands in the water. And his girlfriend shows up in a rowboat and they get in and the Titanic falls into the water. And then there's this whole thing at the ending where the Germans like, the company was trying to make us go fast. And the courts are like, well, we're capitalists too, so you're innocent. And it was this whole thing about how the system's rigged against the working class and how Germans are noble and the British and the Americans are all about money. So as a propaganda film, that would work. That was the plot. But what happened was when they were making the movies, when the weird stuff started to happen, Goebbels, Goebbels, I can't believe it. Okay, anyways, he personally picked the director to do this film. He had worked on other propaganda films for him. He goes, I want you to direct this. The movie cost at its time 180 million dollars well with inflation or maybe not inflation let me check 
Yeah, with inflation, $180 million. Remember, they're, they're at war. This is not like in 1937. They're in war. This is 1942. They got other stuff to spend their money on. Anyways, he personally picks this director. They're shooting the movie, and the Nazis send over a bunch of advisors to the film to be like, this is what it's like being on a boat. And the advisors are constantly drunk, and they're sexually molesting or assaulting the women working on there. And the director's like, okay, guys, let's get it together. And they won't listen to him. So he starts complaining. Now, that's one thing you don't want to do in a totalitarian state because it gets back to Goebbels. He personally pulls in the director and says, did you say this stuff? And the director's like, looks at him and goes, yeah, I said that stuff. And that really made... Uh, I'm just going to stick with Goebbels. It really made Goebbels mad. <laughs> I really hope that's how you say his name. Anyways, it really made him mad because this was a guy he personally picked and now he's basically like throwing that in his face. He sends him to jail, but luckily for the Nazis, he hangs himself the next day. So the director's dead and it's ruled a suicide. So then the cast is like, what? You know, that's not, he didn't die and they kind of get upset and... Goebbels is like, hey, listen, man, you can complain all you want. I got a nice jail cell with an extra bed sheet. So the cast was like, okay, we're done. We're done with this. So they get another director. He continue to make the movie. It gets finished. It's way over budget. It gets finished. Now, and also they actually had, like, they were shooting it on a real, like, liner, a real big boat. And there was, you know, obviously pickup shots other place, but the set was a, an actual boat that was sailing out in the ocean. So they shoot the movie, and Goebbels is watching it at one point. It's all done. And there's scenes to show how, like, uncaring the capitalists are towards the poor people in on the boat. So there's a few scenes of, like, you know, they'll pull down gates and lock them so the poor people can't get out. And you saw that, actually, in the James Cameron movie, Titanic. Like, these safety gates came down, and they'd lock them, but it prevented people from getting out to surface so they could not drown. So there's scenes of these gates coming down and, like, families being separated and, like, reaching through the gate. And, like, the German mother's like, come to me, my daughter. And the German daughter's like, I'm so scared. I can't get through the gate. I can't get through the gate. And they think that's one of the reasons why this movie was never aired in Germany, because that's kind of like what was going on in concentration camps and in ghettos and on trains. People were basically having gates put in between them and crying as in this movie was the capitalist, the uncaring capitalists. And in reality, it was the uncaring national socialists. They also say that it wasn't released. Another reason why it wasn't released was that it made, it was coming towards the end of the war and it was basically a movie about a hopeless event and a few people surviving a hopeless event. And historians feel that it might, as Goebbels was watching it, he might have thought they, the German people might think more of the Titanic being this horrible, hopeless event and it, making that the equivalent to what they were going through. Like, they're literally on a sinking ship. Both sides of two different armies are just pushing them in. So the movie was never released in Germany. After the war, it sh it was aired in Russia sometimes, and they called it a trophy film, which I think it was almost like, that's almost like a hate song. Like, they destroyed Germany, and then they would watch this movie and laugh at it about how stupid it was. There was a VHS copy that was floating around Germany for a while. They say would air on television every once in a while. And it did start to get shown in other places because German films, the cinematography is pretty good. Like they, they really pioneered some filmmaking techniques. And eventually did get restored and you can watch it now. I haven't seen it. I'm assuming it would be all in German, but that could be a bad assumption. So what happened to the boat? What happened to the boat that they filmed the Titanic on? Well, apparently, it was towards the end of the war. It's like almost over. And the Germans were like, oh, man, you know, it's all, we're almost out of here. What can we do? We're almost done. What do you want to do? And the other guy's like, you know what I want to do? I want to kill some more Jewish people. So they loaded a bunch of Jewish people onto this boat, turned it into a prison boat, and sent it out. 
going, okay, two things are going to happen. With the wars ending, two things are going to happen. Either the British are going to blow it up or we're going to sink it. One of the two. And some British bombers spotted a Nazi ship in the water and they dropped bombs on it and killed them. And it was, they kill, ended up killing three times the amount of people who died on the actual Titanic. That is the history of, it's generally called the Nazi Titanic. And it was actually the first movie on the subject that was called Titanic. Or the Titanic. Before they were called like A Night to Remember. I think was the first big uh, Titanic film. This one was just called The Titanic. Or no, actually it was just called Titanic. I don't know how many times I have to say that. This one was called Titanic. It was the first movie about the event called Titanic. There had been other movies about that. I know one of them was called The Night to Remember, which sounds romantic, but it's not. It's a bunch of people drowning. Movies are a very good propaganda tool. But you may want to think long and hard about what you're trying to propagandize. Because obviously they had some things in mind about corruption in the government and uncaring bureaucrats separating families and the hopelessness of being surrounded by darkness and slowly drowning probably aren't messages you want to give to people who live in a brutal totalitarian regime where they've seen families separated and they are getting bombed daily. Probably not a good idea. Nazi Germany was full of bad ideas. This was probably their least bad idea. I do have to say, I would I would watch this, not the movie Titanic, because again, it's probably on German, but I would watch a movie about the making of Titanic. I think that sounds far more interesting than the movie they made. I think I would watch that. I'm not a big fan of World War II movies in general. I think they're all kind of the same. Saving Private Ryan was okay. Saving Private Ryan actually only had one good scene, and that was the beach scene. Everything else was kind of lame, honestly. And it made every game be washed out gray after that. Call of Duty and all that stuff, it's like they just put gray saran wrap over their graphics and said, hey, it's like Saving Private Ryan. I'm not a big fan of those that era, that storytelling era. I'm not a big fan of it. But I, I'd watch this, maybe, if it was on Stars or something like that on YouTube. We'll find out. When it comes out, if it ever does. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be... Oh, I have a, I am curious. What happens if when they're making this movie about the Nazi Titanic, that boat sinks too? That would be crazy. You know, a, a guy died making James Cameron's Titanic. Maybe just that story is cursed. I'm not going to make a Celine Dion joke either. That's kind of low-hanging fruit. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. Uh, Facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio is our Facebook. On Twitter, we are at Jason O. Carpenter. DeadRabbitRadio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. Uh, this It's so hot. DeadRabbitRadio... Oh, man. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great day. Stay hydrated, people. Stay hydrated. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys.